Russia's assault on Ukraine is well into its third week. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky addressed the United States Congress, appealing for the U.S. to take the lead in stopping the war being waged by Russian President Putin. What should the U.S. and NATO's role be? Joining me to discuss is Dr. Don Jensen. He's the director for Russia and Europe at the U.S. Institute of Peace in Washington, D.C., and then we'll be joined by U.S. Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey a bit later. Don, you lived in Russia. You were there when the Soviet Union fell. This is the third week of this invasion. Uh, there are a series of sanctions against Russia. Putin's been called a war criminal now throughout the United States and Europe. How far do you think Putin's willing to go to conquer Ukraine? And, and what is his goal at this point? Well, I think it's, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. Uh, he's willing to go quite far. What's at stake in his calculation is his crazy uh, romantic view of Russia, what the Russian state is, which is an empire. It's his own, they're his own mm -hmm. personal rule. I think, for, frankly, there's a, some personal animus toward Ukraine and its leadership as well, and certainly toward the United States. Ukraine has made a democratic choice to join Europe, to join the West. He cannot stand that. That's not compatible with his views, vision of Russia. And he thinks, of course, Ukraine is part of Russia, hence the invasion. Mm. Uh, how long do you think he's going to keep this up? I mean, how long can he? Thousands of his troops have been have been lost in this conflict, according to reports. Yeah, according to reports, uh, seven to fourteen thousand. The Ukrainians uh, claim fourteen. Certainly, the the wounded are about three times as much. Putin thought he he miscalculated, since he doesn't think the Ukraine mm -hmm. is a real country. He thought they would bring flowers when the tanks rolled in three weeks ago, and they didn't. They fought. And in response, Putin has amped up the violence, committed, frankly, mm -hmm. war crimes, as you've seen tragically this week. And I think he's yeah. willing to keep this up quite a while, as long as the, the coffers hold out in Moscow. Uh, I think he would be tempted to use even more destructive means, chemical weapons and perhaps even wow. nuclear weapons. That's what makes, Raymond, that's what makes this crisis so dangerous. Mm. On Wednesday, Ukrainian President Zelensky addressed Congress. Uh, he said this directly to President Biden. Listen. I see no sense in life if it cannot stop the death. And this is my main mission as the leader of my people, great Ukrainians. And as the leader of my nation, I am addressing the President Biden, you are the leader of the nation, of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Don, first of all, what do you make of those comments, uh, really challenging the president to be uh, the leader of the world, which he isn't. He's the leader of the United States. Um, your take on that and this notion of he should be a leader for peace, uh, isn't that what Biden's attempting to do with his restraint here? Well, the Ukrainian people admire the United States a great deal. And the United States still, for all our problems, embodies for— uh, many Ukrainians and many East Europeans, the ideals that we all grew up with here in the United States. So he's essentially calling out the president, the U.S. government, to do more. We've done quite a lot. We've drawn some red lines, as you well know, sir, but we have done more. And, and Biden is, is walking a fine line. He doesn't want to provoke a war with Russia. At the same time, right. he wants to, to uh, support these uh, brave people in their attempts, their, their their desires to enter uh, Europe, to enter the Western community of democracies. So the Ukrainians are in a tough time. They're holding up well. But I think what you saw in, in President Zelensky's speech and his remarks was he, they want more. They realize, I think, that NATO membership is not on the cards. But certainly, they want the kind of military assistance that the president promised yesterday and is already on its way to Ukraine and, frankly, has helped them considerably, so far at least, in holding off the Russian invaders. 
Don, there are ongoing talks between the Ukrainians and the Russians. Uh, as you mentioned a moment ago, uh, Zelensky ruled out NATO membership, which was part of the condition here that uh, the Russians would like to see. But uh, Zelensky is demanding that uh, Ukraine remain and it, you know a, a territory intact. He doesn't want to cede any of those independent uh, areas or regions to Russia, which is the demand that Putin's making upon him. Is this foolhardy to not um, embrace this for the sake of peace and for the sake of his people and the rest of the country? Well, I think it's not foolhardy at all. Frankly, uh, the Ukrainians can keep their independence by not losing. Russia has to win, and Russia spent an enormous amount of people and manpower on this invasion, even in the three weeks that we've seen. The danger is that the West might lose interest. The danger is that mm -hmm. Russia can go to the negotiating table where they are now and then not be serious, because the Russians, frankly, the Kremlin cannot be trusted to a large extent on these mm -hmm. kinds of things. There is an right. organic link between what goes on in negotiations and what goes on in the battlefield. And as long as Russia keeps pushing, there's not going to be any successful mediation or compromise on the on the uh, on the uh, uh, negotiations. I would say that the Russia that there is some indication of progress, some, not a lot, which is to say that the Ukrainian side, I think, will take will withdraw its NATO request, not not officially, but will say we're not going to be in NATO, but we must have security guarantees. We will be non-aligned, as you've seen this week a lot, talk about Austria and Finland. But to some extent, the press has mis misunderstood this, this desire. They will take neutrality as long as they have an army and as long as they have security guarantees from the U.S., mm -hmm. from NATO, and so forth. So that's co considerably less than Putin wants. Putin does not think but, Ukraine but, is a country. He does not think Ukrainians are a separate no. people. He's willing to fight for it. And what we may yeah. end up is uh, with a situation like Syria, where there are enclaves in the country mm. controlled by either side. And that's not going to eliminate the human suffering, and it's not going to be make a political settlement any Yeah, and, and, so but, but Don, and I'm going to leave you with this. I, I've only got 30 seconds, but I, I, sure. I really would like your insight on this. Um, it wasn't the time to gripe about this, fight over it, back in 2014, when Russia first moved into these territories and gave out 700,000 Russian passports to Ukrainian citizens. Wasn't that the time for the world to get engaged? Now it seems this is the second invasion of Ukraine. This is the second invasion, and Frank, frankly, sir, the first didn't stop. Yes, that was a time that would have been more appropriate. As you know, the sanctions were relatively weak. The allies right. were in disagreement, and it's only now they can act in unison. So better late than never, but we'll see if it can turn mm -hmm. the tide. Don Jensen, I thank you for your insight. Hope you'll come back. Thanks again. I want to go now to Congressman Chris Smith of New Jersey. He's a senior member of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. Um, I, I want to start with your reaction to Ukrainian President Zelensky's address to Congress on Wednesday. Watch. Ladies and gentlemen, members of Congress, please take the lead. I am asking to make sure that the Russians do not receive a single penny that they use to destroy people in Ukraine. Uh, Congressman, your reaction, and shouldn't we keep in mind that this was not the U.K. or France, but a very unstable democracy, Ukraine, that was teetering financially and awash in corruption before this invasion. But, Raymond, they were free. And, uh, you know, yeah. I've been there many times in the past, and the Ukrainian people are amazing. They're very God-loving, uh, so many of them, and, and they deserve their basic human rights. And, unfortunately, all of that has been shattered uh, by war criminal uh, 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 Vladimir Putin. And, and w w Zelensky's uh, address was very powerful. Uh, everyone there, I think, just felt it, that this man is a hero. Uh, he's risking his life uh, every single day. And obviously, his countrymen are, and countrywomen are being uh, decimated by Putin's wanton behavior. Uh, so it was really a, a very powerful. And the takeaway, uh, I mean, he wants the MiGs 
uh, which Poland very bravely has offered to provide. Uh, why not provide his pilots the ability to defend themselves? We're already giving them uh, uh, Stinger missiles and, and uh, javelins uh, uh, to take out tanks. So we are arming him, not enough. Uh, I argue that if we go back to a year ago, right now, when they were mustering those troops on the border, uh, had, had mm -hmm. President Biden adhered to the requests and gave him the ability to deter an invasion, uh, we might be talking a whole different thing. Uh, but sadly, uh, they didn't do it. Well, during these peace talks, and there have been peace talks yeah. now between Russia and, and uh, Ukraine going back and forth, Zelensky has pushed away the Russian offer to accept Crimea and Donbass as Russian territory. Now, there's no doubt Putin's a killer. Uh, he, he, he's destroying innocence. He's blasting these cities to rubble. But are we incentivizing Zelensky to resist a peace plan with the billions of dollars in military equipment and the imagining that the U.S. and Europe will come in and repel Russia in the final act? Well, Raymond, my sense is that the only way you deter a bully, which is Putin and a war criminal, uh, is with a capability to resist and deter and if necessary, which is the case now, stop him. Mm -hmm. and, and that's when the negotiations will bear fruit. So long as it's a one-sided uh, massacre on the part of, of Putin, uh, he has no incentive, none whatsoever, because NATO mm -hmm. and the United States have made it very clear that unless he goes into uh, NATO countries, uh, we won't lift a finger to protect Ukraine. Uh, and Belarus is also involved with, with Lukashenko, uh, so he's now yep. complicit in war crimes as well. Uh, and we need to indict these people. That's what my hearing was all about. Don't wait for six months yep. like we did or a year with other war crimes tribunals. We have enough evidence mm -hmm. right now, just like we did when, when um, Hitler went into Poland, to say, who ordered that? Right. Who ordered that killing and maiming uh, and the leveling of whole cities? Well, we know who it is. It's Vladimir Putin. And I know you have a bill to that effect uh, that yes, you've, you've written up. Uh, the president called him a war criminal this week. He appears yeah. one to me, certainly. Why is the U.S., though? And this is my real question. On the one hand, we're sending $2 billion to Ukraine to, uh, you know, to fight this war criminal. On the other hand, the Biden administration yesterday lifted sanctions on Russia in the Iran nuke deal, so Russia is contracted to build $10 billion nuclear plants in Tehran. What sense does that make, Congressman Smith? Uh, Raymond, it makes absolutely no sense. The fact that the egregiously flawed Iranian deal is being resurrected by Biden, uh, which almost guarantees that they will get nuclear weapons and they have the means to deliver them, ICBMs, which they've tested, um, is just what world and alternative universe are they living in? And to have Russia brokering uh, this is just, I just can't believe it. Uh, it was very hidden. There was a lack of transparency. Wendy Sherman, the number two at the U.S. Department of State, was involved with the original one with John Curry. She and Blinken are moving on this. I find it appalling in the extreme. I mean, the Iranians, death to Israel, death to America, and we're going to give them billions of dollars to increase their terrorism, coupled with a means to acquiring uh, a nuclear uh, uh, a bomb, and m not just one, but many. And so I, I'm, this makes I, no I, sense. It, it makes no sense whatsoever, Raymond. And and no. uh, you know, where, where are the hearings in Congress uh, being called by my friends on the other side of the aisle, the Democrats, to hold them to account, to get all of this on right. the record? Uh, we don't, you know, they're just doing it. And I think that's yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're, again. We're, we're sanctioning Russia on the left hand, and then we're yes. giving them $10 billion on the right. To build. We're, we're, I mean, we're giving them more than we're giving Zelensky. None of oh, this right. makes sense to me, and the American people should know about it. Uh, I have to move on. I'm almost out of time. There sure. is the uh, request from Zelensky. He wants these MiGs. Uh, the Biden yes. administration says I if we get involved in that, it's going to amp up the tensions here. W American pilots will have to get involved. We'll have to shoot Russian planes out of the sky. This is not a good move. So far, members of Congress seem unanimous that the U.S. should not be part of that no-fly zone in Ukraine. You've said uh, that we should immediately authorize the conveyance of those planes. Why? Those planes to be flown by Ukrainian pilots. Uh, they are MiGs, and they are adept at flying those MiGs. 
uh, in order to, I mean, we're already doing it with, with Stinger missiles, uh, which take out aircraft, whether it be helicopters or jets. Uh, this just gives them another ability, They're not just to control, try to control the skies, but also when they ring Kiev with artillery and just bombard it to smithereens, who's going to mm -hmm. take out those artillery pieces? Jets have that capability uh, because it is a yeah. slaughter that's going to get worse. And this evens the playing field. And as Zelensky said, he doesn't want our planes in the sense of our pilots flying them. Uh, he wants his pilots to fly them. So it's a Ukrainian no-fly zone, not a NATO or American no-fly zone. Um, I want to end on this. How much do you think the Congress's appetite is for spending on this war in Ukraine? Is there a limit? And if, God forbid, Putin uses chemical weapons here, what will the U.S. involvement be, do you think? Well, it's unclear because the commander in chief makes that call. And remember with, with um, Syria, uh, when the bright line was put down by President Obama uh, and chemical weapons were used, there was no response. So putting bright lines mm -hmm. or red lines down, you know, uh, unless you're absolutely committed to uh, acting upon that uh, is, is mm -hmm. folly. And, uh, and, and, you know, this could have been prevented, in my opinion. This whole thing potentially could have been prevented uh, had we given Zelensky, when he asked for it, what he wanted, and in quantities that could have deterred Vladimir Putin. And, you know, it's not unlike what happened with, and you mentioned um, uh, when uh, Putin went into um, uh, other parts, including Crimea, of, of Ukraine. Right. Uh, I was Back there. Back in 2014. When, when, when President Portachenko stood up and said, I can't win a war with blankets. And what, he, what did he get from the Obama administration? More blankets. You know, it's like mm -hmm. having a police force that walks around with blankets. Doesn't work. Uh, you know, criminals yeah. will take advantage of that, and Putin has taken advantage of it. Uh, in this horrific scenario well, that's unfolding. Well, we shall pray for peace. Uh, in the meantime, yes. Congressman Chris Smith, thank you for being there. We'll check in with you in the days ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much.